All right. So welcome everybody to the fifth of our Richie Nomi New York City guest lectures. For everyone who was here last week, welcome back. For anyone who wasn't here last week, welcome. Um, these lectures cover Mahjong strategy, but this week we're going to be covering a different kind of Mahjong strategy, which is going to be all about our mental game. Now, this week we're going to be going back to our usual lecture format of our lecture is going to be screen sharing the slide deck and then going through the content right here on voice. Now, you're not all going to be on server mute this week. We're working on letting go of control, but we're still going to ask you to stay on mute unless you'd like to chime in and contribute to a question or you're called upon to share your experiences or answer questions by Loic. So feel free to jump in with specific questions and stuff like that. Other than that, Loic will be calling on you. And similarly to how we've done, I think, in the past two lectures, in the lecture participation channel, we can join the list to be called on. So like join, you can see I just joined that list by doing, we're doing at, we're doing ampersand, ampersands this time to differentiate from all our different bots. So you can feel free to join. As you guys know, the topic this week is about tilt. So you don't need to worry all that much about being called on for hard, how many tiles acceptance do you have kind of questions. It's going to be a little bit different. It'll be more like sharing times that you've got tilted and how you dealt with it, which is a topic that most of us have, you know, a wealth of experience in. So feel free to queue up in that list for one of the few times anyone will ever want to hear about your salt. As always, with our Reachy No Me Behavior Guidelines, just reiterating, same as every week, we're not going to be having any hateful comments, any rude comments, not tolerated. Try to keep it on topic, too. It's easy to get deep in the weeds when we start talking about our salt. We can get in our feelings about it. We're going to try to keep it on topic so that we can all have fun and learn. Sound good? Good. Now, just to also mention, because so that others can enjoy these lectures later, they are recorded and posted up on the Reachy you know Me YouTube channel, including any audience participation. So that video will be going up, you know, in the next couple weeks, and we'll link it out when it does. All right. Now, without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and get started? So I'm introducing our lecturer tonight, who is Loic. Loic is our northern neighbor, representing the Montreal Club. He likes going to tournaments, and he got first place in the Rochester Ricci Open 2020 just a few months ago. He is a great guy, and he has fun playing Mahjong, which makes him one of the few people qualified to give today's lecture on tilt. So with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Loic to begin our presentation. Thank you, Claire. Uh, so yeah, basically, I'm pretty nervous to, uh, to present this one. Uh, it's going to be a fun lecture for sure. Uh, so, all right. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. On va commencer en français. Nah, just kidding. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously this lecture is going to be in English and not French. Sorry if my English is bad at times. Uh, it happens. So, dealing with tilt in Mahjong, a guide to stressing your way out or, uh, out of or into, who knows, fourth place. So basically knowing how to play Mahjong is just the first part. The mental game is just as important. Uh, so we'll be tackling some, um, some, some different subjects uh, within the lecture. So I'll start off with some notes. Uh, we'll see Tilt, uh, what it is uh, uh, basically, how to manage uh, emotions, the learning process, what you can control or not. The, the different types of tilt, so ladder and uh, tournament, the big guidelines and the closing words. Uh, so uh, first of all, at any point during this lecture, of course, don't hesitate to ask questions or to start a discussion. That, that might be in the lecture participation uh, channel uh, or directly through voice right here. You can unmute yourselves uh, at any time. Uh, so I'll um, I mostly use dealing in as a go-to example in, next, in the next slide. Uh, so, yeah, also at some points in the lecture, I'll ask you guys uh, for questions or salty uh, screenshot. So, the saltier, the better. Uh, don't hesitate to queue up with the lecture bot with the, what is it, the ampersand join. Uh, so, uh, you can be called. All right, uh, what is tilt? Uh, so basically tilt originated as a poker term 
for a state of mental or emotional confusion or fr frustration in which a player adopts a less than optimal strategy, usually resulting in the player becoming over-aggressive. And it sucks. So it it is originally from poker, but uh, we can use it uh, in other games, including Mahjong. Uh, so the the first the first thing you you need to know about tilt is you 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 can win them all. You can not win all the hands and have this perfect man can every time. Uh, even the best pros deal in from time to time. I think it was around uh, ten percent deal in. I I don't know the exact numbers, uh, but I I like this quote from Majong Sol uh, Adat. So deal in is not the end. All that is just the beginning. You, well, whenever you deal in, it's just uh, a matter of, you know, it's a normal part of the game. <clears throat> it's part of uh, being lucky or not. I mean, sometimes you get the duck, sometimes someone else get, gets the duck, and that's how it is. Uh, so, yeah, you win some, you lose some, basically. Getting fourth, even though you feel like uh, quote unquote, quote, 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 should you shouldn't be there uh, is also part of the game. There's going to be a fourth place in every match on games. Uh, it it just happened. So of course zero zero risk uh, doesn't exist unless a tile is uh, full for return for everybody. Then there's always a small risk that a tile isn't safe. Uh, so, of course, risk uh, management is uh, oh, Q if you can mute yourself. Oh, good. Uh, so, I was saying risk management uh, is also part of Reach Mahjong. Whether you like it or not, that's why also defense is so important. But <laughs> it's so much more fun to play with risk. So, I'll start off with uh, a recent example of something... Uh, something audacious, I would say, I, I did in one, in one of my games recently. So the player on my right, the Shimocha, has uh, just reached it. Uh, and he's pretty comfortable, he's in the lead with in points and everything, he's, he's been uh, scary for a while. So here I go ahead and I decide to can on that white dragon. Why? Because I'm waiting four and seven months which he dropped already. So that makes the other players more susceptible to deal in to me. And that's exactly what happened. Well, I've been lucky of that on that one, of course, but that's exactly what happened with the, the time and the, the turn just after the can directly. So that's my first question for you guys. Uh, uh, how do you think uh, Toyman feels about that, or Shimocha for that matter? Who also could have had uh, a big hand, especially with the Kandora. I'll just... Uh, oh yeah, I can pick someone, yay. You're called on Claire. Oh, I love being one. called on. How do I feel that the person the person who dealt in feels, I bet they feel pretty bad. Dealing in feels pretty bad. They're the dealer. They probably wanted to win their own hand instead of dealing in. That would make me feel unhappy. I'm going to go ahead and say the person who got the hand, who won, feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my feedback on that. Sorry if that's too naive of an answer. No, that's actually pretty good. Because in poker, we call that the bad beat. Oh, the, that's interesting to know. But, uh, yeah, basically, uh, you know, emotions is just part of the game. You can't really, uh, uh, how could I say, you, you can't escape that. Simply. So, oh, you I, I like this one. You can't expe ex escape it. So, uh, share your experiences. Uh, any of y'all got any uh, situations where you thought you add it all and tilted way too hard for it to be sane. Uh, so try to find some screenshots related on stuff either you or someone else uh, did in your recent game. 
how did the person on the receiving end feel or how did you feel for that matter so uh, uh, I'll go ahead with uh, Amrita Shower who, uh, who, who took a, a screenshot there so can you see my discord right here uh, yeah I can see it can you hear me yeah we can hear you yeah so that was um, an interesting physician just a standard dealer Ricci and then oh okay I bust out in East one <laughs> Oh so, yeah, that that's pretty uh, pretty intense right there on the show sushi. Yes, and um, especially since there were just there was no sign of a sushi, so I was um, I remember watching as I slowly started uh, getting seeing the winds getting cold, and then I drew the south. Um, I felt mm-hmm. pretty bad about it, but um, yeah. So after that, I think one of my one of my strategies when something like that happens is to just not play for a while because yeah. <laughs> that one is like <laughs> you can't yeah, that, really do that, anything that, about that, it yeah it's just pure bad luck right there uh, yeah. especially since you know it's a yakuman and he just got onto you 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 couldn't even defend uh, yeah. but yeah that that sucks for sure uh, I, I think you made the right call to stop playing for a while, you know, just relax and, uh, you know, the point of uh, this kind of end right here is uh, you can't control it, right? Because you had no indication that he was going for it, uh, that Janshi one was going for that Yakuman uh, until it happened. It's part of the game. It's just uh, bad luck that you had uh, on that particular end. Uh, and well, <laughs> it, it sucks uh, in the moment. But after that, uh, you know, it's just uh, a game you bust. Uh, in the long term, that will amount to um, uh, to not that big of a difference because uh, you get a lot of force, you you get a lot of first places, and that's just part of the stuff you need to accept in mahjong. It's a luck game. It's like that, and. You know, just try to uh, to tell yourself that you couldn't have done it any better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's just funny though. I I I I think one of my first reactions was, "Well, okay, um, should I be <laughs> laughing at this or crying at this?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, I I like these kinds of situations because you're just like, man, that happens so rarely that you're just like, okay. Okay, I'll, I I accept that, and I I cry and laugh at the same time because you know, to to some extent, it's just beautiful to to have this happen in in front of your eyes. Of course, you're the one receiving it, but <laughs> there there's something <laughs> a bit magical <laughs> about it. All right, yeah. Thank you. There's some more uh, images in chat in chat, so maybe I'll go uh, with the. Um, uh, with Crow's image next. Uh, so Crow, what happened uh, in your uh, image in particular? So it doesn't show the resolution, but I was one discard away from a Nagashi manga on here. And after playing for 13 years, I've never gotten a Nagashi for all the Tenho games I've played and everything like that. So I was super excited to be drawing, you know, enough terminals and everything. And here I actually have the choice of discarding either the one pin or the nine pin. And um, mm-hmm. Turns out it doesn't really matter which one I discard it into. Both of them actually discard in in this situation, despite the fact that the nine is the last one in the deck and um, the one being Dora, I chose to go with the nine. So just dealing in there, you know, after being so close to this big of a hand was just really rough for me. Um, yeah. That's where, you know, I kind of, you know, to mitigate it like you were talking about, um, what I ended up doing is I went back through the replay to kind of understand the situation, saw that, you know, no matter what I did there, I was going to deal in because I don't think there's any reasonable way to fold this hand. Um, and kind of discuss it with a few other people to kind of understand the strategy, kind of get confirmation that, yeah, you made the right move. It's just, you know, like Yoko was saying, it's just a bad beat. And uh, for me, that helped kind of understand the situation, understand that, yes, I'm playing fine, and it just didn't work out. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's you, you're you getting the, the right call, but the, the, 
the, the other players just get more lucky than you. And it's part of the game. I guess at some point you just have to accept it. All right. Thank you, Crow. All right. Oh, there are a lot of screenshots still. I'll go with the uh, Mokus. So, all right. Uh, all right. <laughs> That's uh, a so. nice uh, disjoint hand you, you've yeah. got there. Uh, she's on, uh, uh, am, am I saying it right? She's on Buddha? Oh, yeah, I believe so. I don't know. Um, but yes, I was at a tournament, and it was that post-tournament. So the tournament was over, but it was still <laughs> like a, you know, you could win some prizes and stuff. This was the Reach uh, uh, Open in Rochester, and I was super excited. I had got 13 broken, which I've never seen in my life. So I go to try and take a picture. I'm like, oh, my God, I have to take a picture of this hand. I was like, don't worry, guys. I've got 13 broken. Like, there's nothing. They were like, no, can't take a picture. And so... I was very sad, and immediately I was like, oh no, who am I playing with? I don't want to have fun and play Mahjong. I can't take a picture of my mm -hmm. hand, so I had to call a, turn, a, a judge over to take a picture of his hand so that I could look at it later. Um, and I feel like this is a thing that really does tilt me, even if I'm on the end of it. Like, if someone's yeah. slow playing and they're ahead and I'm not sure, so I try to call them out, and then I feel really bad, it's like tournament rules sharking usually tilts me pretty bad even if i'm the one who like does it so i usually end up not doing it so yeah so i'm not sure what to do there actually but mm -hmm. uh i don't know in this particular case i just let it not bother me too much because i was ended up being able to get a picture of it and it wasn't for tournament play anyway so it didn't bother me too much but you know mm -hmm. yeah sometimes just little things like that, people not respecting uh, protocol in tournaments or just a tournament setting at all. Ma many things can uh, make you tilt, and it's not always thing we can control, right? Yeah. So uh, you just have to, uh, uh, how could I say? <laughs> it, it's part of the game at some point, and uh, you just have to uh, accept the rules that are uh, uh, yep. that are there and uh, go ahead with your games yep all right so there oh there are two more we'll take these two ones and then uh, we'll go back to the lecture so the next one is peels infamous uh, missions at uh, suanko can you uh, tell us uh, more about it uh, Pio? sure uh so yeah um I decide to cut the eight pin to go for Cheetoy because I am I am Ishan ten for Cheetoy, and um, what is it? It's like a higher chance to get the tiles for Cheetoy than to go for Tsuanko. Like it's pretty much, and because like you know going for Tsuanko, then that means I'm like going back in uh, Shan ten, so it's the right choice um, to do that. So then I cut. Um, I cut the I cut the eight pin and then I immediately draw two other uh, two other tiles that would have made me uh, ten pi for Soanko. Um, mm -hmm. It's not Tanki, so it would probably be Sanam Toy Toy, but um, still kind of feels bad uh, because you know yeah. you play efficiently and you get punished, and that is one of the things that um, annoys me the most is when uh, you get the like the bad draw but then like the bad draw is clearly like uh you know makes your hand way bigger um but if you look i it's east one like the, the hanchan budget just started and um at this point like uh at the point where i drew my third my third uh, anko i was just like all right uh, i know that i'm not gonna be making super rational decisions at this point because i'm just going to be sad uh so i pretty much just folded the hand um pretty much and then i was like i have a whole hunch on left to go i cannot tilt and i knew i knew if i dealt in here uh i would probably like not play properly so i just folded mm -hmm. um, yeah i think it's the right call as well yeah i mean i got into tempai by kind of just discarding safe tiles um but mm -hmm. Um, the purse, uh, my Kamicha, like, you know, they, they got the roan off someone else. And I was like, all right, whatever. You just got to forget about the hand. These things happen and then just move on. Yeah, that's fair. I think you handled it well here. Yeah. Great job. 
All right, and the last one will be uh, Eric. <coughs> so, uh, all right, right here. Oh, you got that double reachy, but uh, people were just ordering the tiles. How did you feel about that? Uh, of course, at the time, I didn't. Oh, we can't hear you uh, very well. It's coming to you now? Uh, you're, uh, I think you're far from the microphone, maybe. Or is it just me having a... no? I'm not sure. My microphone isn't the best either, but I can try speaking a bit louder. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I can kind of hear you, but uh, it seems far. Uh, Claire, can you hear uh, Eric well? Working better now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I found out what it was. But anyway, as a precursor to this, in this Hanchan, uh, after going into the south round, it was just a lot of my hands being denied tempai. And so I yeah. thought, finally, a lucky break and a decent hand, too. I got the con mm -hmm. afterwards, very happy about that. And then the frustrating part wasn't so much that, you know, they started off with their high pies with six copies of my only outs, but more so that it got all the way down to Ryukyoku at the end. And someone else reached it after, so it was very scary. And post game, I was looking at that and just think, how do I deserve this? How do I deserve this? And there's nothing you can do about that, of course. And in hindsight, I, it's, it's almost laughable in hindsight that you get the best luck and the worst luck at the same times. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, it's just part of the game. <laughs> you can't control luck at all uh, in these kinds of situations. But uh, I mean, you, you made the most out of it, I think double reaching on that was a great call as well so uh, you you just have to i mean you just have to take it i guess it's uh, it's already great that you could have that uh, double reachy chance but uh, yeah it's it sucks uh, for sure when you 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 get to the end and you're like man i i could have won this end but what happened and then yeah, it's it's part of the game, man. All right, thank you. So let's go back to. Uh, I'll just go back to the PowerPoint, so everyone can see the PowerPoint or the presentation, rather. Yes, we can. Awesome. So uh, here's a little meme for you guys. I'm always salty. So what about emotions? Well, knowing there's uh, there's always a risk, what, right? When you play uh, when you play mahjong, <coughs> uh, you you don't want to deal in, but you still deal in. Uh, should I remain calm after uh, after that to avoid tilting? Well, yes and no. It's uh, a bit of both. Being calm after I deal in is more of a result of getting to know your emotions better. Oh yeah, you can uh, you can check out the meme uh, in uh, the lecture participation through uh, Exploradora bot. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it's normal to feel frustrated after a deal in or, or to feel angry or <coughs> whatever. You know, just having emotions is uh, a, nor a normal part of uh, the Mahjong experience. Uh, what you really need to do here is uh, to do an introspection. What went wrong? Uh, could it have been better? Because, uh, you know, either it's going to be a learning ex experience or it was the best des decision on average and you should just have to make peace with that decision. And some, sometimes it's, it's hard to, uh, to accept. It really is. But you know, it's it's part of the game. And yeah, sometimes after I us, you will be sad. Sometimes you will want to crush your laptop onto the wall. Please don't do it, Claire. Don't do it. Sometimes even after a win, you will still feel, feel bad uh, because you could have done this or that better. Uh, so don't, uh, how could I say? Well, there, there's this trick, uh, don't suppress your emotions. Even anger, it's okay to feel disappointed, sad, angry, whatever. 
uh, just don't take it out on somebody else. But you can, of course, talk about it after calming down a bit. Uh, you might also get some good feedback on how to, uh, how to improve. So uh, feeling is emotions is normal. Uh, you can <laughs> you can talk with other people and uh, sometimes yes. You you may you might have made a bad decision, but sometimes it's also the the best course of action that you took within the end the, the end that, that you were playing. So it really comes down to uh, what uh, oh I like I like the office uh, meme that was just shared. So uh, yeah, it, <laughs> it really comes down to uh, to to knowing that and seeing a bit of uh, logic. And all of that. So uh, something else that uh, you shouldn't take that much into uh, into uh, consideration is others' viewpoints. Uh, I know some people were like, "Am I really as good as other people? Am I not just a scrub?" Blah blah blah. Uh, truth is, you're probably better than you think. Don't take others viewpoints that much into account. It's good to have an outside view from time to time, of course, uh, but you should never let it affect your confidence. And something that's really important, you cannot magically improve. That comes over time. Uh, that's a lot of work. It requires a lot of practice, uh, but it's long. It's, uh, it's pretty long, and it's not easy. Uh, so it all boils down to uh, to practice in a sense uh, getting 10 fourth places in a row will happen from time to time i am sorry for everyone who goes through that but it happens it's part of luck and sometimes luck is just not on your side uh, so basically the best you can do out of that is just to uh, practice Practice, practice, practice the the best you can. And as Dasuke told me uh, one time, perfect practice makes perfect. So if you understand what aspect of your play made you lose that and or anchan, uh, or if if you know so, if you can recognize some weaknesses that you have or uh, highlight some strengths that you have. Uh, then you gotta practice that strength. You gotta practice to patch that weakness, or to change uh, your way of uh, of playing so that it's not a weakness anymore. So how do I learn exactly? Uh, there's a model that I like uh, that was uh, shared uh, by me. Uh, uh, well, that that was shared in a, a book that Claire uh, uh, passed me on. So. It's called the adult learning model. Uh, there are four simple steps uh, in that model. So first one is unconscious and confidence. Uh, you don't know what you don't know. You might lack uh, a skill or know, uh, know it uh, without knowing. So that simply you're doing something and you don't know why. Uh, so at that point you don't uh, I'm, it's a bit repetitive, but you don't really know anything about it. So just uh, starting to notice that you have that or that you aren't doing something becomes conscious and competence. Then you are aware of what you don't know, and it helps you target uh, an area of improvement already. So the more you try to practice this area, the more you get to uh, to know it. Uh, that will make you slide into conscious uh, into the conscious confidence. So step three, you you become better at something you've practiced, uh, but you still need to think about it and keep practicing it. Uh, so you're good at that point. It can be defense. It can be uh, uh, playing uh, dama, playing uh, open, whatever. Uh, there's there are so many different things you can uh, you can practice. And the more you practice it, the, the more it becomes a, a habit. You, you get a habit out of it, and it becomes the unconscious confidence, which, which is kind of a holy grail, so to say, that you've practiced something so much that your skill becomes automatic, uh, and you don't even have to think about it. Uh, so 
always try to tend towards that unconscious competence. Uh, it is hard getting there. Uh, there's a, a rocky hill. You will feel that sometimes you're rising a bit and you're all happy and yay, I'm getting better. And then you're going back down because uh, you're trying something else a bit different and then it just doesn't click as well uh, because you're not doing it uh, the same way. Uh, so you feel that you're you're actually not that good, and that's this uh, uh, this feeling I was talking earlier. Uh, oh, am I really as good as pe as other people or something? No, you're just learning, and it's part of the process. It's normal, uh, and yeah, it's uh, a lot of ups and downs, but it's super worth it. Once you get to the the real level of unconscious competence, then uh, you become uh, a really strong player and you can understand better uh, what is right, what what well, what is better, what is worse. And then you just start uh, doing that more naturally and that nets you more wins in the end. So that's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Uh, so always remember that you cannot control everything. Uh, so that uh, there are some things that can make you tilt, and uh, some things, some things within that uh, you can control them. So your strategy, your emotional res response uh, to some extent, and uh, your objectives uh, for uh, any hand or enchant. For instance, oh, I'll try. Uh, you you get uh, a high pie, uh, and then you're like, okay, I can't go really far with that but I can try to at least have 240, so uh, 2,600 uh, points. Uh, or for the Hanshan, you see that uh, first is getting uh, too far away, so you're like, okay, I'll try to be second, for instance. So uh, that you can control uh, as well. But you cannot control your own luck or other players' luck or strategies. Uh, so if someone else uh, gets really lucky and goes in with that Dieter Hahnemann uh, to move, for instance, and he goes first place really fast, then, you know, you can't do anything about it. Uh, it's just part of the game. You need to uh, to accept the this that you can't, uh, you, you can't uh, catch up at that moment, maybe. So, yeah. That's uh, that's pretty much that. So yeah, we're talking about we we have talked about preventing tilt, uh, but what to do when you are actually tilted? You're like fuck. I just dealt into dealer for 18k, so I am now super salty. Uh, first, recognize the step that you are actually salty, because that will happen pretty. Well, I guess that can happen from time to time. Uh, so just knowing that you are salty, for instance, uh, you're feeling a bit bad or uh, your face is hot, it can be anything. Just knowing that, that's the most uh, important step. Otherwise, you can't uh, go over to the next step. So you're salty, you know it. Relax. Take a deep breath. And it's... It, it it sounds a bit uh, cliche or uh, <laughs> just just like uh, something we would all say, but uh, it really does help. And this way, by relaxing, you take a step back and it's, uh, also analyze the situation. Uh, did I do the right choice? Uh, have I played the? Uh, uh, there's a, a typo there. Have I played a little too aggressive or defensive? Possible. So uh, just just make sure that uh, you well maybe you will not understand that that can happen maybe it's just like oh I haven't been lucky don't don't necessarily tell you that maybe if you haven't been lucky quote unquote uh, it's just that uh, maybe you think you had the right choice maybe you can go see the replay after that. Uh, but maybe it was the right choice uh, under the moment and just say, okay, it happens. I'll let it pass and I'll try to uh, 
to improve my ranking a little later in the game. Also remind yourself uh, of what you usually do in these situations. So what are you currently trying to learn? Uh, so this all conscious competence uh, in the learning process, uh, that means uh, oh, I'm trying to get better on defense, I'm trying to get better on uh, reaching, and I feel that I haven't done this uh, well enough. So try to remember what have you learned uh, so far about defense or about reach uh, that you might have that you might forget uh, when you're tilted, but because that's the first part that goes away when you're tilted, you uh, you, you when you're too salty or tilted, uh, you will start forgetting things and go back to this kind of uh, old habits you have that are not necessarily the best. So always do that, do keep that in mind. So we're down to another, uh, uh, share your experiences. So try to find some screenshots where you tilted somewhat, uh, but you kept your calm and bounce back later in the game or what, uh, uh, otherwise what could have, could you have worked on to improve. So I'll go ahead to the lecture participation uh, channel and see, uh, I'll, I'll go with the, uh, I don't know if I I can choose, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's big, right? Oh, so you are called on PO, or do we, do we go with the, uh, with the, Pio, do you still have something uh, to show, or it's all right? Not off, like, the top of my, like, not, like, right now. Okay, right. Maybe yeah. I'll just go to the to the screenshot then. Okay. Um, so Tsub Tsubasa Mika has shared uh, something, uh, well, a screenshot of what she could have done better, maybe. Uh, what is it? So basically, okay, uh, the player just before... Uh, Sumos, I guess, on uh, on Atal, and then uh, the next tile would have been uh, hers. Uh, how did you feel about that, uh, Tsubasa Mika? Mika said that she can't come onto voice right now, but she can type out her response. Okay, sure. Let's uh, let's wait for that uh, response then. All right, so I guess that. <laughs> Words in that knife, nice. Yeah, basically, uh, you. I, I guess you felt that you were robbed at some uh, at some extent. Yeah, I like the the emoji right here. You can see that uh, Alex has it uh, just right. So uh, a big thumbs up for that. <clears throat> so yeah, sometimes people will have uh, slightly. Uh, faster end than you. Uh, you cannot really do anything about it. That's part of the game. Like I said, you cannot control some well the other people's luck. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess it's part of it. Uh, things of the. <coughs> Yeah, things out of game can make you tilted too. Can you uh, can you talk uh, a bit about that, uh, Claire? Sure. Uh, so I find that like I get tilted in game sometimes, but I also <laughs> can get really tilted out of game when like like I can be a very proud person, and when like yeah. I feel insulted by something, it really gets in my head, and then like I find that it both impacts me like out of game, like, I'll find myself thinking about it. I'll be like, man, like, does that person really think that about me? Like, I can't believe that someone said that about me. Like, man, it, like, gets in my head, like, out of game. And then in game, too, I find that sometimes it makes me make, like, worse choices because I'll be like, oh, this person thinks I'm an inter like, or someone who plays in all the time. Like, I'm just going to end. And then if I do deal in, which, like you said, is, like, it's a normal part of Mahjong, right? Like, sometimes you play in. Sometimes it's the right move to make to push a tile. But then, like, it kind of serves as this kind of, like, oh, well, you know, this person expected me to end, and then I did end. So I guess I am the inter that they said that I was. So I find that, like, 
things like that, like ends up, even though it's completely divorced from the actual game itself, necessarily, mm -hmm. it just like, it, things like that can get in my head sometimes. Yeah, I guess. I, I mean, for you, maybe it's a kind of a confirmation uh, bias, more or less. Uh, because oh. at that moment, the person is like, uh, oh, you deal in often, and then you're like, do I really deal in that often? And and then you you just go into a game where you happen to deal in four times in a row. That that happens. Uh, but uh, remember that uh, that table with things you can control or not, uh, you cannot control uh, other people's thoughts or, or impressions. Maybe uh maybe you deal in may maybe that's the case i i don't really know uh i i, I play with you from time to time but i don't remember you dealing in that, but, uh, uh, but yeah absolutely when when people just make uh these kind of comments uh you know you you have to well we're talking about being salty, but you have to take them with a grain of salt, <laughs> so to speak. So, um, yeah, I think I you're guess. right that it's confirmation bias. I actually hadn't thought of that, mm -hmm. which yeah, is kind maybe. of silly because I should have thought of that. But it is true that, like, whenever things like that happen, my mind goes straight, like, oh, this always happens. Like, I always deal in this person's right about me kind of thing. As opposed to, like, thinking, like, well, not only does that not, I don't always end. There are some hands I don't play into. Also, yeah. other people say that I don't end, but I, I think the confirmation bias is a helpful way to think about it. Yeah, yeah, maybe that there there can be many explanations, right? But maybe that would be one of these that maybe just because you get these time these type of comments, then you're like, oh, maybe I really didn't that much. See, I'm a player who deals in a lot uh, because I play aggressively. I get I, I do push a lot of hands. Uh, so naturally, I will deal in a lot. So if people tell me, "Oh, Luke, you deal in uh, a lot of a lot of times all the time," whatever, I'm like, "Yeah, that's how I play. It's normal." So it can really depend on how you approach uh, the situation. Sometimes you will deal in uh, by how your play style is. Sometimes uh, you think you deal in often, but you don't deal in that often. It's that makes sense. So yeah. Next, I'll go with. Uh, ta -ta -ta. I'll just read Amrita Shower's uh, point. Is it a question? One thing that I've used and found really helpful for myself is. Oh yeah, I I like that. I like that point. So uh, Amrita Shower says. Uh, 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 what will this matter in 10 days? Yes, no, 10 months, 10 years. So yeah, that's actually a great point. You you can put stuff uh, into perspective like that uh, and just take a, a step back and see, uh, does this change anything at all? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. If it does, well, it's kind of a big deal because there's really few things in Mahjong that do matter this uh, this much. But uh, uh, yeah, it's always a, a great thing to uh, take a step back and see uh, uh, see what uh, you can do uh, about uh, about your current decisions. And most of the time, your decisions in game will not matter that much. All right. Uh, outside of that, uh, I haven't been uh, doing the pick thing that much, so I don't know if uh, I can pick on someone. Oh, uh, uh, I picked uh, Nimian. Uh, so experience where I tilted. Not really, because I'm. I tend to be rather calm but i do remember uh having a few moments where i just had to step outside for a while like go outside go breathe some some air get away a little bit uh, especially during tournaments yeah when i start doing bad and actually i have a moment where it happened uh at the wrc in 2017 mm -hmm. where uh the first first game first hometown of the tournament 
I got a last place with, uh, I think I had like 5,000 points left, something like that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's a very bad way to start a tournament, of course. Yeah. And, but I try to like remain calm and like, it's not like I can do, I can really do worse. And then I ended up doing worse. Yeah. I got like about 4,000 points my second game. Yeah, well, uh, at the same time, it's WRC, so of course the level yeah. is uh, way, way higher that you can expect from other tournaments. Yeah, yeah and I, <laughs> I mean, it was in a way kind of a reality check. <laughs> yeah. But... Well, this, I think this might be a special check, a, spe a special case, but uh, go ahead. I... Yeah, it is a special case, but... Um... Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it did, um, I mean, I've learned a lot from it, of like, okay, I need to learn to play a bit more defensively, I cannot always play um, in, well, attack mode, mm -hmm. but also one thing that did help me was just to step away, it did help that it was lunchtime, I like going back alone for a little while, just breathing and trying to calm and just like realize it's not that much of a big deal mm -hmm. yeah i think that that's a great point actually just uh taking this walk uh, that you did that that can help you a lot just to you know uh relax take a think step about back something else see. for a little while and remember oh, yeah, also absolutely. that mahjong is super fun no mm -hmm. matter what mahjong is super fun oh yeah it is you're you're losing badly fourth place uh, minus twenty thousand points. Hey, it's so fun, guys! It might not be fun <laughs> when it happens. Yeah. But I mean, no matter how, I'm and I'm pretty sure it's the same for for mostly everyone here. No matter how much we lose, we're we're still gonna do another game. Maybe not to the same day. Maybe not even the next day. Maybe we're not gonna play for a month, but we, we most probably are going to play again because we just love the game. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that sums it up uh, pretty good. Thank you, Anne, for, uh, for your point. All right, I'll pick someone else. Uh, Tsubasamika. Oh, that's you again. Uh, so uh, are you... Um, this is still going to be on in 10, right? Oh. They, they went away. That's uh, uh, time for a repick. Uh, Crow, you are called on. So, do you want to right, share? I have, a, I have a screenshot to share. It's a little bit more meta. Give me just a moment, sorry. Okay, awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh... There it is. So those who might not be aware of the website, this is from Nodachi. It's a tracker for Tenho ranking. Um, and this is actually a pretty recent one I'm still working on recovering from. Um, near the bottom half of that, if you notice, it's uh, 10 fourth places in 11 games with a third mixed in there. Right. Um, so that's, yeah, that's uh, the... obviously a horrible score. And I was kind of at the, I thought I was at the top of my game, you know, six dawn and climbing in Tenho for a little while. Um, but then yeah. I put this horrible, horrible streak down to the point where you can see I deranked to a fifth on. Um, so honestly, this is still something I'm still working to recover for a little bit. Um, but you know, there's obviously a lot of salt there. The Basically, the bottom six mm -hmm. games or so there, I should not have played. I should have taken a break and gotten away from it. Um, but I was able to identify that at least at some point. You know, I went back, looked at stats, reviewed my game, reviewed reading material, all that sort of stuff. Um, and that's kind of what I'm working on recovering now. So I'm back to climbing in Tokujo now and uh, just continue to work on that rank and get that back up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously when when you have so many fours in a row, I mean, uh, there's probably a part that's uh, due to bad luck as well uh, because uh, you can't win them all. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it, it's just uh, aligns perfectly in I, I, I kind of the wrong direction so uh, you get a lot of fourth places in a row and then you feel like shit it's normal uh, that that you feel this way 
it's uh, it's part of the learning process but uh, yeah just maybe taking a step back will uh, help you a lot uh, maybe by checking the the replays for these games I don't know if they were still available it seems it was in April uh, Oh, yeah, and but, that's uh, I, I did do that and everything, and you know, it took me some time. And I realized, you know, pretty much the exact point where I should have stopped playing that I needed to step away, you know, just that little bit quicker if I didn't want to actually de rank there. Um, mm -hmm. Like, even the top half, honestly, was mostly fine. But yeah, and like you said, it's just knowing that moment that you need to step away from the game for a little while. And unfortunately, I kind of went into mm -hmm. it thinking, oh, it can't be that bad. I'm playing fine, and I actually got more aggressive because I wanted to, you know, sort of prove it to myself and wanted to win that game so I could get out of my streak. And unfortunately, yeah. the harder I pushed for it, the worse it got. Yeah, because uh, I I guess that uh, ju just by being in that situation, well, of course, we, now you can, uh, uh, you know, that at that moment you were tilt, but uh, when when you were uh, in, in the situation uh, per se, maybe you didn't recognize the signs of like, okay, I am tilting, I should not keep playing at, at that moment because I will keep making mistakes and all. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, it just happens and uh, I, I think it's good uh, that you, you recognize that you were tilting at that moment. So next time you encounter this same kind of situation, uh, because you can feel it, right? You can You can feel that something is not right uh, when you're playing and you feel that uh, maybe it's due to luck or it's due to uh, uh, an outside uh, parameter, something, anything. Uh, at least you can recognize it now and act on it quicker the, the next time. Yeah, we hope for that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing this, uh, Jake. All right. Uh, so, Claire, I have a good advice for that. Uh, actually, on uh, well, I'll go with Mashing Soul as uh, as an example. There's a log out button that you can click that helps. I hope that uh, this helps. So, uh, oh, that's a folks uh, uh, sharing uh, thoughts uh, in the chat. So uh, point says, with regards to laddering, shifting, shifting to a friendly or lower pressure game uh, has helped them. So that's a good point. Uh, you can switch over to another game that uh, either has less pressure or just to relax. Uh, if you have Animal Crossing, it's great. I have a okay turnip price this week. Uh, Zell says, I suggest if you cannot bring yourself to do it, reach out for a casual friendly, uh, play however you want, but ask your opponents to keep an eye on your play, review the game after. Oh, that's uh, an interesting one. So maybe it can uh, it can help you uh, with, uh, with your play just to have a better idea of what's going right or what's going wrong. Uh, use a jammer on your device. Yeah, that uh, that works as well. So yeah, that's pretty much that. That time is flying. So I'll go back to the presentation. Uh, there it is. Uh, so whoopsies. I'll see if I can. Whoops. Well, that will be that. Share your experiences. Everyone can see the power the PowerPoint. Sure can. All right. So basically, uh, I'll talk about two kinds of tilt uh, that we can encounter uh, during Mahjong play. So that's uh, ladder tilt and tournament tilt. Uh, so ladder goes on forever. That's uh, that's a fact. You might have a goal for a, for a time, but ultimately, uh, your goal should should be to improve over time simply put. So uh, do not attach too much importance to a single game or fourth place finish. It happens. I'll just see if I can uh, put my amen. Oh, my my Discord uh, window is in a, a weird place. Anyway, so uh, climbing uh, a ladder is uh, tedious. 
So uh, as we can say, it's the grind trademark. Uh, so yeah, don't fo focus too much on the rank in particular. Uh, you will get that six done, seven done, eight done, uh, or master one, master two, master three. I'm looking at everyone that's trying to climb for the the upcoming cat food tournament. Uh, invest your time in trying to spot your mistakes. Uh, most and foremost, uh, and improving your play around them. <clears throat> if you're just going for a rank, if you just want to get that master two because that's going to be the cutoff, quote unquote, unquote uh, then you have a way higher chance of getting tilted, and you don't want that. So just make sure that uh, you keep learning and that uh, you you play uh, you play well enough. Uh, so if if you get a couple thirds and fourths in a row, uh, maybe you're not thinking clearly and you are tilting. So take some time off uh, the game to vent, as we saw uh, with the with Rose example. Uh, staying in the tilt uh, situation for too long is damaging. Uh, try to think about uh, your good points in the game you just played. Of course, it sucks full sometimes, uh, but maybe in that South 2 in particular, it was the right decision. It can be. Uh, so that's our tilt on one part, and we have tournament tilt as well. Uh, so I, I guess most of you guys have been uh, to tournaments already. Uh, so basically, the first thing you need you need to remember is always stay focused on your ultimate objective so uh, in a tournament you always have uh, plenty of time uh, to adjust so uh, whether it's uh, top 8 uh, top 16 top 32 top 4 whatever <clears throat> uh, you still have time because uh, it's uh, usually around uh, six chance to qualify more or less, it depends uh, on the tournament, of course. But uh, you know, if you get uh, fourth place in the second Anshan and you're like, "Oh, my, my chances are down to zero. Not necessarily. You still have time to adjust. Uh, and by becoming, by by ceding to panic, you you will start to tilt. That's that's all you tilt. Uh, so yeah, don't push, don't push uh, aimlessly on in three reaches. Uh, it's better to do 3k uh, than 12k, basically. So uh, of course, it's easy to lose track of uh, your objective if your end is bad or if you deal into someone. But if you are focused enough, if you keep your focus uh, over the the course of the tournament, then one just one bad choice or a bad hand will uh, will not uh, make you throw your tournament. Uh, I think I awarded that weirdly, but it's okay. So yeah, the best advice I can give you is do not change your play style in tournaments. <clears throat> uh, a lot of people do it. A lot of people are like, okay, it's a tournament, so I'm going to play more defensive. And uh, that's where it it, it kind of uh, becomes worse for that person because they're they're not used to that. Do just do what you do best and make the most out of it. The more you do that, the more you'll be able to focus on your game. Uh, under pressure, uh, people will sometimes play more aggressively or defensively, uh, or feel like they should play better, more like the pros or whatever. Uh, that uh, as I said, that throws them off, and it can open the door to tilt, for instance. <clears throat> so uh, a white tool set is better than an arrow tool set, uh, but an arrow tool set you master is better than a white tool set you don't know enough. Uh, so I'll go with uh, some uh, example. So the first one uh, is. Um, uh, I'll give an example of a super strong player that uh, manages to avoid tilt uh, very well. Uh, so uh, for those who know her, it's uh, Shan from our, uh, from our club. Every year she finishes at the top table at the Rochester tournament. 
the the thing is, you know, she, she didn't like her job that much when she comes to Rochester. It feels great. It feels like a, a vacation. Uh, we eat at great restaurants. Uh, we go at a nice hotel. That makes her forget her job, and she takes that time to just have fun, you know, just uh, uh, play and be there and have fun. <clears throat> so whenever she plays, in the tournament she's in the zone so you can't remove her uh, you can't remove her, her from the zone you can't remove her focus uh, and then she uh, she takes all your points she just doesn't tilt at all sometimes you you see her go and you're like man what are you doing and she just does it so well and that's all she gets to uh, the final table she doesn't tilt at all so that's an example. Another example is uh, uh, one of the times I already tilted hard. Uh, in 2018, I organized uh, a, a tournament, Montreal uh, Reach Open, but also participated. Uh, so my scores in each enchant were pretty good, except for the fi fifth and sixth enchant. <clears throat> so what happened uh, at that moment? I tilted as easy as that, as that because we had the organi organization issues at that point and uh, I stressed a lot uh, over them uh, we we resolved them after a while but uh, you know I, I had a pretty uh, harsh fifth tension and uh, got a chumbo on that so yeah that wasn't uh, the the easiest uh, the easiest tension that I got in a tournament so, you know, issues like that can put me off focus. Uh, and remember that uh, focus is the number one thing that you will have uh, uh, when not tilting. So you, you want to keep the focus uh, as much uh, as you can. So here we go again. Share your experiences. Uh, try to find uh, some screenshots of something that happened during ladder or tournament play. <clears throat> or, or you can also type out uh, your experiences uh, in chat. So does seeing the big picture uh, help you stay focused or not that much? So maybe I'll try to... Oh man, I have trouble with my Discord. Whoops, no. I think if people can think of a time that they got tilted and they just want to hop in, that's okay too. Even if you don't have a screen, oh, yeah, have sure. it ready. So maybe I can uh, pick someone. Uh, Moku, do you want to uh, share your experiences? Uh, sure. Um, so actually, I kind of have uh, this. I still get, what do I want to say? Um, I get very tilted. I think I've already kind of said this. It's it's similar to what Claire was saying um, before when people sort of, I guess it's sort of belitter, belittle, belitter, I don't know, sort of like saying that uh, you're not great at uh, Mahjong belittle, or belittle. something. A little, thank you. Sort of like belittling personalities. And then I feel uh, like there's, you know, uh, pressure to play in games. And it's like, you win. It was because you were very lucky. You lose because you're bad. And these sort of uh, personalities I've found, um, uh, not not so much in the Mahjong community as much, but it's, there's definitely one individual where I've, I've avoided many tournaments because I do not want to play with them and things like that. And it's very, um, I don't know, I feel like I can get very tilted um, based on uh, this sort of thing. This is a big problem when I was starting uh, the Rochester Club. Um, and I still don't think I've fully resolved sort of how to deal with people similar to how, how like, uh, I guess the, it was very similar um, to how Thursday was talking about. But uh, I feel more like I want to remove myself from certain situations with people who make me very, like, upset and I feel like are not good for me enjoying certain, like, games or something. But at the same time, I want to enjoy the greater community of Mahjong or some, or like some game or something else. Right. And uh, so if I want to go to like a tournament or something that I know someone's going to be at, then it's like, I don't know, 
this is probably my biggest anxiety when it comes to like mahjong or different games so yeah, i'm not it's, sure how yeah, it's, it, i agree that it's not easy to um, interact with these kinds of people because you know they they're just they're in they but it but it told you and you can you can do anything and they they won't change with the with the single thing you say i guess the the best you can do uh, in this situation is just like uh you know you're like uh, oh they they think uh, they think they can belittle me nah, uh, screw that they they can think whatever they they want and they will think it whatever and then you go on and uh, you win the tournament as simple <laughs> as that i guess i guess i can try <laughs> it tilts me really hard though but yeah yeah you, I mean, it's of course it's not easy. If if you're tilted by that, it's uh, uh, I can understand why, and I think it's it's really how could I say? Uh, it's it's a skill to learn to just uh, learn that uh, some people's opinions are really not that good, I guess. And or or rather that you shouldn't uh, care that much. Yeah, I guess. All right, thank you so, very much. No problem. All right, uh, Tsubasamika, do you want to uh, share your experience uh, in the chat? Ah, there you go. Oh no, double run. That's arch. Arch. Sorry. So yeah, do you want to uh, <coughs> uh, to explain uh, this situation uh, in the chat? Okay, so okay, one one of the people got uh, a Hanneman out of the sun, and the other one got. Uh, 96,000 uh, points, uh, 9,600, sorry. Uh, so that's the first one is uh, Shimocha, person of their, on uh, your right, and uh, the other person is Kamicha, person on your left. So yeah, 20,000 20, points in one end, that's pretty harsh, isn't it? So I guess that, uh, well, when when that happens, you can't really do uh, that much about it, especially since you were in uh, reach also on that hand uh, with a fairly good weight. Yeah, that that is for sure. That that's the kind of situations where you will uh, where where it's uh, more probable to uh, to tilt as well. <coughs> uh, so yeah, I, I understand completely uh, your point here, and uh, yeah, it, I mean it just it just happens, uh, especially situations like that where uh, you were last and maybe a bit tilted already. So uh, that might have pushed you even more uh, over the edge. So uh, yeah, I think going out for a, a little. Uh, little walk or just take a, a, a deep breath that helps a lot just to uh, to pass to something else basically so yeah that's pretty much <coughs> uh, I put on music that's uh, a great thing to do uh, Scott as well and uh, Claire is adding things uh, in chat as well. Uh, she thinks people who suck are everywhere in every group, like my work and Mahjong in life. That is true. And it's the same skill to ignore them at Mahjong as elsewhere. <coughs> it is a life skill that, that's important. So yeah, I agree with that totally. Uh, it's just a part of life. We can't really control it either. Maybe I can pick someone else. Oh, Claire, that's your turn. <laughs> well, I kind of said what I was going to say. I think what I would add on to that too is that, um, like I said, 
sometimes if you think about like what's making you angry about mahjong it can be related to what maybe makes you angry in other parts of your life too so not like it's like the same thing like i i don't deal into baimons in my day-to-day -day life like outside of mahjong i only do that in mahjong but i mean more like it's the same types of things like feeling like something is unfair is kind of a universal experience right and so maybe that's something that makes you angry in mahjong and in other parts of your life so it can be helpful sometimes as opposed to just looking for like a mahjong based strategy to reducing your tilt also thinking like well in general what's making me feel bad what's making me feel this kind of way and kind of addressing that can be helpful as well yeah and again, i'm a mental health professional so i always promote that but everyone yeah. see a therapist <laughs> yeah it's important to see a therapist i'm not sure if it's uh... Uh, expensive or not in the US uh, but in Canada I think you can uh, have that covered by some uh, insurances so that's pretty cool all right I'll pick somebody else pick uh, Zell uh, can you uh, can you share your experiences I've got kind of a tournament story on how I was brought into tilt and taken out of it all by my own good and bad luck and you just have to kind of keep a perspective. So obviously with Yakuman, um, emotions run really high. In one tournament, I got a sue on Gotenpai, so I reached it, even though the Kushabo weight was all middle tiles and completely crap. Because uh, that's what you do anyway. You want your opponents to fold. You want to be able to simul it. And one player, the dealer, kept pushing at me anyway and pushed like live Dora, live Yakuhai tiles, everything else. And um, then I eventually, not only did I not get it, I dealt into them for 12k. So I was in last for almost the entire game. And I was tilted at this point. I wasn't playing well. And then we did it all last. And I'm, I need to pick up, um, like, 3,900 points some more or whatever. I can't remember exactly what it was to get out of last place. And I, and then I get hamstrung because of my toy man reaches. I can't do anything. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, third place deals in and goes below me. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's not even my luck. That's like they chose to push or whatever, couldn't read it. They had bad luck, and I was safe. So it was, it, it was all like in and out of tilt within one game. Like I was able to approach the last game like, oh, my gosh, I got lucky. Yeah. Some, I saved 10,000 points of Uma because of somebody else stealing in. Yeah, that's great. I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, it's it's just not just you uh, being unlucky. Sometimes other people are unlucky, too. So there's always this possibility, of course. Yeah, it's just, it's it's always those things when when you get a Yakuman or a Yakuman chance, emotions mm -hmm. run high, and it's really easy to tilt after it doesn't work out, especially if you get to ten five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I agree so much. Thank you for your uh, for sharing this, uh, Steve. All right, I'll see if there's uh, more people in queue. Light Pink Yoshi, you're up to uh, up to speak. Yep, all right, so I'm going to post a, a picture here. Um, I was recently playing in the, uh, the, uh, the team tournament that Russia hosted, which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed playing in it. But um, through my first three games, um, one of the stats that uh, the Russia website tracks look like this. All right. Uh, where is the picture? Ah, oh, there it is. Oh. So I was losing points to Sumo on almost half the hands that I played through three games. Um. <clears throat> And it was just like, what am I even doing? Like, I ended up, like, feeding, I think, four hands total over the course of seven Hanshan on that tournament, and I finished negative. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, uh, I want to throw things at a wall. But like, Yeah, I understand. I mean, and this is, like, the situation where, like, I can't necessarily, like, run away because it's a tournament. Not only because it's a tournament, because it's a team tournament. I've got friends counting on me. So it's just like... I mean, just like kind of, I just kind of keep myself in the right headspace. It's like, one, this is for fun. Like, there's no like real benefit here. But two, like, I have teammates, like, I can get helped out. And just like, so going, like, having other people, like, being in call with other people really, really helped me out there. It's like, even yeah. when stupid shit happens, it's just like, you know, it's like, it's a game. You're playing with friends, it's having fun. And it's yeah, like, absolutely. they're they're giving me shit. I'm like, I'm giving myself shit. And it's just like, it's like, so I'm mad at what's happening in game, but I'm still like keeping, uh, keeping relatively unsalty like in person yeah i i think that just uh having people around you that can uh, talk you out of it can help a lot as well just uh you know uh, 
being like, oh man, I'm losing all uh, all these points to these two moles, and people are like, man, it's just a game, uh, chillax, and you know, uh, just just being together, and you know, this this kind of stuff happens in mahjong from time to time. You will not get lucky every time. Sometimes you will be even far worse than than unlucky, but it happens. And then just moving on to uh, the next game, to the next Sanshan, or to the next tournament, that that can uh, uh, help you a lot. So uh, yeah, thank thank you for sharing that, uh, Max. All right, so I think uh, we have uh, no more people in the queue right now. So I'll just go back to the to the presentation. Uh, so yeah, every hand is different. Keep, keep in mind that every high pie, uh, that's your starting hand, uh, you get dealt, and also what tiles you draw and others discard is what influences your luck. Uh, so luck does not carry over from hand to hand. Uh, there, there are all other stuff that does carry over, like tilts or. Uh, uh, whatever uh, your points uh, are at, at this point. So, uh, of course, this will have a, an influence on what strategy you have. Uh, but remember, there's what some people call the flow. is not really luck-based, but rather based on each player's confidence at the table <coughs> in any given hand. So, uh, if you tilt and other people uh, don't, so that's where these people will make uh, more great plays and have more uh, <coughs> uh, more more opportunities to uh, to strike points on the other players. So uh, don't forget that it's a game. Mahjong is a game, a fun game, I might even say. And uh, yeah, don't forget that if you aren't having, having fun, uh, maybe you're not doing something right. So, of course, you know, when you're tilted, uh, it's, it's a bit less fun. So it's better to uh, just uh, take a break <clears throat> and remember that it's a game, it's fun, usually, and that uh, you'll, you'll enjoy it uh, uh, even more a bit later. Uh, if uh, all goes well. And on a side note, uh, praise tr Sanso. Sanso is uh, is great, Sanso is like, uh, and the Church of Sanso now accepts donation. Uh, please donate only Sanso tiles so we can make the best Ryuisos and uh, Suankos, uh, double Y commands every time. Thank you. So, any questions? I'll just check in chat uh, at the same time, so if there's anything. Oh yeah. Thank you, Natsuki, for that uh, great sound. So uh, I see a question in chat from Rachel from before. I have a question. Any advice for when you know going into a match that one of your tilt triggers will be there? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, that's... Uh... You mean if uh, one of the players? Uh, yeah, exactly. Makes, like you're like, oh man, like this person again. Like I have to play them. I always get mad when I play them, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, usually I'm I'm the one uh, I'm the person who people don't like to play against. But uh, I'll try to answer this that uh, uh, anyway. I guess. Um. <coughs> I guess uh, sorry, sorry for that. Um, it's 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 a it's a great question because I I have to think uh, a bit more uh, about the answer. Uh, so um, oh man, Scott, we need to play against yeah soon. Uh, uh, I guess I I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. maybe you have a an idea to how to answer, uh, Claire. I was going to say, I think about this a lot because there's a lot of people specifically I tilt against when I'm playing. And I think for me what it comes back to again is like being very conscious of like what I am what I do when I t 
tilt. It's almost an advantage to know in advance you're going to be tilted, right? And I can say, okay, well, yeah. when I get tilted, I stop making good push-fold decisions. When I get tilted, I, like, lose my, like, I don't know, my tile efficiency. Whatever it is for you, if you know, when I'm tilted, this is something that's going to fly out the window for me. Because then you can kind of proactively be like, okay, I know that this game, I might make bad push-fold choices. And just be, keep that at the front of your mind and be very conscious of it. Because then you can kind of compensate for it. Um, it's kind of better than being caught by surprise by the tilt midway through, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting take. Maybe I, I would like to add as also, uh, yeah, of course, there are some people where you you might think, oh, I'm, I might be tilted a, a, against that person or this other person. I would say, uh, you know, everyone is human. Everyone makes mistakes uh, that that might sound cheesy i'm sorry but uh, um, i don't think uh, uh, i i believe that with with some luck uh, you can beat any other person at mahjong uh, it's just a matter of uh, uh, practicing more on your game and uh, getting getting in there with the right mindset and then this this person maybe has a really good strategy. Maybe uh, they have a really good style. <clears throat> so uh, uh, it's just a matter of uh, knowing how to play against them. Also, uh, that can help you maybe uh, achieve more against this person. So uh, yeah, may, maybe my question is not uh, uh, my answer. Sorry, is not uh, the best, but uh, I hope that. It would it will uh, help you in the future. So yeah, any uh, any other questions? Going once, I think there is uh, doing something. Keep a Google Sheet. Oh yeah, you can add me to that Google Sheet, guys. People I want to beat. I guess uh, it's cool to be on that kind of sheet. Uh, going twice if uh, nobody else uh, wants to uh, to ask any questions I guess I can close it off and so yeah thank you for coming so uh, time to lose in ranked everyone or in reaching Nomi club night if you're part of this club and it's time to play club night after this all right Loic thank you so much for coming and teaching us today if anyone later gets really, really salty and just needs to vent about it, just DM Malik. That's what he opened himself up to by giving this lecture. Uh, he's just as friendly as he sounds. Um, and as a reminder to everyone else, our next lecture is going to be next week, uh, Wednesday at the same time. Uh, it's going to be with our friend Max on tournament strategies. So hopefully I'll get to see many of you there to learn more about crushing your opposition. And with that said, this lecture is now over. My club, we're going to start club night now, so y'all can hop into that module lobby and queue up. And again, thank you, Loic. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, uh, NY uh, Richinomi, for inviting me. That was great. Of course, Loic. <laughs>